So we're going to start now. Of course, other people will probably still be joining us, but good afternoon and welcome to the Iowa City Foreign Relations Council program today with our guest speaker, Dr. Peter Gerlach. Thanks to everyone who has joined us online today, and I thank all our members and donors who have also been supporting us. I am Catherine Whitnabin, Executive Director of the Iowa City Foreign Relations Council and host for today's program. The Iowa City Foreign Relations Council is really pleased to announce that we have received a grant from Humanities Iowa and the National Endowment for Humanities to carry out a project on refugees and immigrants in Iowa. Today, Dr. Peter Gerlach, who is the project director, will provide an overview of this project and will answer your questions. We would also like to thank and acknowledge our other annual donors and sponsors for their support. The Iowa Arts Council through the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs, the University of Iowa's International Programs, Honors Program, and Public Policy Center, the Stanley UI Foundation Support Organization, Midwest One Bank, City Channel 4 and the UI Library Archives who provide all our programs online. So you can always see all of our programs online, including this one, which is being recorded right now. And last but not least, our members and friends. The Iowa City Foreign Relations Council has adopted the Native American Land Acknowledgement prepared for the City of Iowa City's Ad Hoc Truth and Reconciliation Commission and Human Rights Commission. We recognize that our home community of Iowa City now occupies the homelands of Native American nations to whom we owe our dedication and commitment. The full text of our acknowledgement is on our website at icfrc.org. As we get started, I would like to cover some Zoom etiquette tips. This is the time to make sure you know where your video and audio mute on mute buttons are located. They're on the bottom left-hand corner. Um, please make sure you keep your audio and video turned off for the duration of the presentation so you do not interrupt the speaker. Following the speaker's presentation, we will have a 15 minute Q&A. At that time, you can submit your questions via the chat function at the bottom of the screen. And we also invite you to turn on your video, but please keep your audio muted to avoid any background noise. That's especially important when we're doing recordings. It's now my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Peter Gerlach. Dr. Gerlach is the Summer Institute Coordinator at the International Writing Program. He received his BA and MA degrees in English from Ripon College and the University of Northern Colorado, respectively. After serving in the US Peace Corps in Mongolia, he earned a PhD in Cultural Foundations of Education from Syracuse University. Since 2004, he has taught university students in composition and literature, English as a foreign language, qualitative research, and international education. Dr. Gerlach is also an adjunct assistant professor in the University of Iowa's International Studies program. He teaches a UI undergraduate course entitled Community Engaged Learning with Refugees and Immigrants in Iowa, which helps to inform this project and which will also draw on the project's learnings for future classes. I'm also, also pleased to note that Dr. Gerlach is a member of the Iowa City Foreign Relations Council Board and is on the program committee. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Peter Gerlach. Thank you so much, Catherine, uh, for, that, uh, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, yes, as a, as a board member at ICFRC, I'm used to uh, you know, being in these spaces in our in our sessions, but uh, now the camera is on me, uh, and it, it will be in the in the coming months uh, for this uh, for this wonderful grant that we have. So yes, today I'm going to be talking about uh, this this really fabulous opportunity that we have uh, at ICFRC. Um, let me go uh, to my next slide here. Um, okay, so. Uh, as Catherine just uh, pointed out, uh, we uh, we have received uh, this this really amazing grant, and it will consist of uh, six free public educational programs, uh, one per month. And uh, I could go over the goals here, but I'm uh, going to do that in a little more depth towards the end uh, of my brief talk today. So. I just want to give you a little more context uh, about the about the whole grant, uh, what's involved. So each of these uh, sessions will be recorded, and so they can be viewed at any time, and they will be uh, shared on Iowa City Channel Four, and so they can be easily accessed there on their website. Uh, at the conclusion of the 
the presentation schedule, we'll be working on a report which summarizes all the issues raised, uh, the lessons that we have learned, and the recommendations for next steps. This will be shared widely with folks uh, across the state, both in an online version and uh, a, a printed one. Uh, I will write this together with uh, a team of, of interns, uh, which will be a, a fabulous collaborative uh, project. The team is a large one working on this grant. Um, the ICFRC staff, of course, uh, Catherine, uh, the five interns will be working uh, most closely on this project. We have a large group of amazing interns. Uh, our board, uh, our amazing board of directors, especially uh, Dr. Reisinger, and the program committee uh, are, are giving a lot of their time as well. And we especially want to know Bill's work here too. Um, so this is a, a team effort uh, and we intend to make this as incredible a project as we can. Our potential partners makes for an even larger group uh, of concerned folks. And we're reaching far and wide across the state uh, with big help from the Bureau of Refugee Services. And I'll touch a little bit more on two individuals uh, who will be working directly with us on that. NPR, PBS, as I noted, Channel 4, and uh, different uh, offices and departments across the University of Iowa who are vital, um, vital partners. OK. So let's get into uh, what exactly we'll be talking about. As I noted, there are six sessions. The first of which will be uh, focusing on resettling Afghan refugees in Iowa. This is next week. So uh, if, if this project uh, is of interest to you, uh, note that we are beginning very soon, uh, Thursday, as a matter of fact. And uh, I won't read the, uh, the descriptions here, but feel free to do so yourself. Instead, I want to focus on the individuals that we'll be inviting. So for this particular session, Mark Sucheska, uh, who's in Des Moines, he's the Bureau Chief for the Iowa Bureau of Refugee Services, uh, will, be, will join us. Uh, he's also the State of Iowa Refugee Coordinator through the Office of Refugee Resettlement. Uh, this is a man who is working tirelessly uh, to bring and to resettle refugees to our state. Sarah Zednik, Zednik excuse me, um, will also join us. She's from Cedar Rapids, and she is the Director of Refugee and Immigrant Services at Catherine McCauley Center. What's notable about the Catherine McCauley Center is that they are uh, the primary refugee resettlement agency in our part of the state and they receive uh, federal funding to be able to do so. Uh, and she will have specifics about what is needed, uh, especially with the resettlement of Afghan refugees, but she and Mock will be talking more broadly also about uh, refugees in general who are coming uh, to, to the state of Iowa. Um, our second panel, uh, oops, excuse me, I jumped ahead there. Our second panel, Life in Iowa as a Refugee and Immigrant, is a broader look at what life is like for individuals uh, who, who have moved here. And I'm in some ways uh, more excited about this panel than maybe some of the others because of the individuals that we're going to bring uh, to engage in conversation with me and with you, I hope. Um, those four folks uh, that may actually be familiar with. His, his name you may have heard, uh, Zalme Niaze from Afghanistan, uh, who lives in Iowa Falls, has been uh, quite a bit in the news because of his, uh, his visa status. In Afghanistan, he worked uh, with the US military and then was able to come over here, but his status was in question for a long time until very recently. And he has secured uh, permanent residency. And uh, he is now the owner of Z's Handyman Services, LLC. He goes by Z. Uh, Elizabeth Bernal, uh, who is originally from Mexico and here in Iowa City, is the co-founder of Open Heartland, uh, a local nonprofit. Uh, Peter, it's Catherine. I want to just interrupt yeah. for a second. Some of the people aren't seeing the slides very well. Um, do you mind just showing them one at a time, putting them up one at a time? I guess people are having trouble seeing them. Uh, okay. The other. 
the other thing you can do if you are having trouble seeing the slides, there should be a, a sort of bar in the middle of your Zoom screen. You can move that left and right, which will enlarge uh, the, the shared screen, so my slides. Um, but I can um, do, I can do this, which will hopefully make it a little bigger. Uh, and I can I can hold that for a second, but now I'm not able to see my own notes, which are on my computer too. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, whatever's gonna work for you. I'm just I've just gotten getting lots of chat. People were having trouble. Sorry to interrupt sure. you. No, 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 that's okay. I want people to see. Uh, here, let me go back for a quick moment so uh, folks can see this first panel. I do want everybody, thank you, Catherine. Yeah. I do want everybody to really see what we'll be talking about. Okay, people are sending um, notes that all is good now. So Okay, good. <laughs> well, forget my notes, right? I mean, sometimes you got to be on the fly. Uh, that's that's good. You know, as a Peace Corps volunteer, uh, you know, I, I sometimes would rely on uh, a piece of technology that I thought might be working, and then it didn't. And then you just go with the flow, right? So we'll go with the flow. Okay, so... Panel one, uh, resettling Afghan refugees. Uh, the second slide, um, yeah, Salme Niazi, uh, Elizabeth Burnell here in Iowa City, uh, Enos uh, uh, Pajivich uh, Jasarovich, she is in uh, Des Moines and she works with Mark Sucheska at the Bureau of Ref Refugee Services and Rex Mwamba, uh, is also in Cedar Rapids, and he works with the Catherine McCauley Center also. I'm particularly interested in what Rex will have to tell us about employment, because that is his primary uh, job function at Catherine McCauley Center. Uh, and that session will be in January, again, each of these being uh, in, in each of the new months. Okay, uh, the, the third panel, and, and please stop me if I'm, if I'm going too quickly. Uh, I can certainly share these slides uh, after the presentation so you can take a closer look at them. That's no problem at all. Um, our third session will be on how COVID-19 has impacted uh, refugees and immigrants in Iowa. And while certainly COVID-19 will be our primary uh, area of concentration in this conversation, we're going to be talking about health and wellness more broadly, including mental health. Uh, certainly COVID-19 in all of our lives uh, has exacerbated, uh, has uh, made more, problem more problematic um, our, our health and wellness as a society, and there have been particular and unique impacts for refugees and immigrants in our state. For this session, uh, we are going to be joined uh, by Dr. Erin uh, Hayward, uh, and she is uh, with the University of Iowa, and she's at the, uh, the, the International Family Medicine Clinic, which uh, is, um, as Dr. Hayward explained to me, um, trying to become the primary point for uh, uh, medical care for folks coming through the Catherine McCauley Center. So they will play a vital role. Lada DeMello, uh, from, originally from India, works at uh, Monsoon, another nonprofit which is focused on folks uh, from Asia and the Pacific Islands. That's based here in Iowa City. And Alyssa Clayton, who is a, uh, a, licensed, uh, a licensed therapist uh, here in the area and also working on uh, her PhD at the University of Iowa, and she will give us some particular focus to mental health. That is on Wednesday, the 9th of February. And as you can see here, uh, all of these sessions will be uh, at the noon hour, the uh, central time. In our fourth panel, Area Refugees and Immigrants in Pursuit of Higher Education. Uh, perhaps of all the programs, this is one closest to my heart, uh, as I uh, have for many years been studying uh, higher education and its impacts on, on people in, 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 uh, in different social locations. Uh, I'm really excited to be able to include Vin Nguyen, uh, who has been part of the Des Moines public school system for about 30 years. He's now in a new, uh, new role at uh, Lutheran Services in Iowa, focusing on uh, citizenship and ESL services uh, for immigrants and refugees. Uh, 
Anne Kish is uh, with the Global Health Program. She's an adjunct uh, assistant professor here at the University of Iowa. And she wrote her dissertation on this very topic, uh, the pursuit of refugees and immigrants, particularly from uh, Central Africa. And then uh, Mallory Patch works at uh, Kirkwood Community College, uh, a local uh, community college that has branches across the state. And she is in a, a very unique position to understand this topic because uh, she directs uh, a grant, a TRIO ESL grant. TRIO is a federally funded grant that uh, institutions of higher education can apply for, which provides uh, education support and services uh, to access higher education and to navigate through higher education uh, for those from uh, disadvantaged backgrounds. The ESL portion means that she's working specifically and directly with folks who are refugees and immigrants working on English as a second language. And we hope that she's also gonna be able to invite one of her students, a humanities uh, major, to give us uh, their perspective on uh, education um, and their own pursuit of higher education. That uh, talk will be on Wednesday, 23rd March. Okay, in our fifth panel, um, this is a really exciting opportunity given uh, also my intersections at the University of Iowa, both in teaching in the International Studies Program and uh, working at the International Writing Program. Here, we're going to be talking about writing and reading about the refugee and immigrant experience. And we're going to recommend two books for this, which uh, I, I truly hope for those uh, maybe most interested or thinking of joining us for this conversation, you take a look at. And I'll come back to this uh, at the end uh, of the talk, too, and I'll actually uh, show you what these, um, what these books look like. Uh, they're listed here at the bottom of the screen. For this session, um, our panel will include Andrea Wilson, who is the editor of the We the Interwoven series, which brings together authors uh, who either live in or have very close ties to the state of Iowa. One of my very favorite things about this book, as I was telling Catherine, I was just talking with one of the writers, uh, a Syrian uh, professor who's currently at Mount Mercy University, is that, and I wanna show this, because I, I'm just, uh, I'm in love with how uh, Andrea and her team has done this. You might see here that the, the book is written uh, in English as well as uh, the, the native or first language of the author. So here, Arabic, um, in English and then in Arabic. So it makes for a thicker book, um, but in fact, they're somewhat shorter pieces. So Andrea has been working on this project for three years, and there are three iterations of the book, and she will, she and I together will invite one or maybe two of the authors from that series. In addition, uh, we're hoping to include uh, a resident from the International Writing Program's uh, fall or spring residency, uh, and that author is yet to be named. And we'll have a discussion there about what it's like to write about one's own experience, what it's like to receive feedback uh, about that and, and why, these, why these stories, why writing about them and reading about them is so very, very important for the growth of empathy, uh, for the greater understanding of the complexities of individuals' lived experiences. Okay, um, our next panel, still a lot to be uh, determined yet, uh, refugees and immigrants, how their stories inform public policy. Uh, details forthcoming. Uh, we are planning this one in collaboration, close collaboration with the UI, University of Iowa Public Policy Center. So more details on that coming. Our tentative uh, date here is in early May. Um, so we will have done so much talking about, so much learning with uh, professionals and individuals, refugees and immigrants, and then looking at in our final session how all of these stories, how what we have been told does, can, and perhaps should inform public policy in the state, and perhaps to some degree a, a bit more broadly too. Um, so yes, indeed, this is uh, a critical uh, and timely topic and a broad interest across our state.
first, um, as you can see here, and as we all know, um, we are amidst an Afghan refugee crisis. And in, in the state of Iowa, as Mark Suchesko will tell us uh, more about, uh, the state has agreed to accept 695 individuals from Afghanistan. Um, second, um, we're having these conversations because Iowa, like many states, including uh, those where you are from, if you're joining us from outside of Iowa, has a growing number of immigrants and refugees from countries across the world. Um, and it's true, uh, as we state here, that while this is a relatively low number, uh, immigrants play an important role in Iowa's economy. Uh, they comprise uh, one out of 10 residents working in the computer and math sciences, for example, and one of six in, uh, produ as production employees. That number is only growing uh, in a big way. In fact, we have in the state of Iowa, more international folks coming to us um, than, uh, in fact, there are so many more folks coming in and, and as especially young people leave our state, our communities are being richly filled with folks, uh, refugees, immigrants uh, from around the world, I think is really exciting. Third, uh, research and firsthand accounts indicate that COVID-19 has drastically, yeah, impaired the socioeconomic health and well-being of, of immigrants and refugees. And as I noted, we'll give particular attention to that. Okay, um, our goals, right? We want to raise the voices and share the stories of refugees and immigrants who come to Iowa. And very importantly, we want to amplify the work, the, the really critical work that nonprofits like the Catherine McCauley Center who will be helping to resettle folks to this area are doing. State and local agencies like the Bureau of Refugee Services and individuals like me, like all of you, are doing to welcome, resettle, and support new Iowans, and those who have been here longer too. Indeed, our neighbors, colleagues, and friends. Um, the programs will aim to give Iowans and their communities a deeper understanding of the cultures and countries of the refugees and immigrants they meet and about whom they meet, the lived experiences of these individuals, how organizations led by immigrants and refugees uh, termed ethnic community-based organizations function and how to work effectively with them, how government agencies, nonprofit organizations, employers, and others are responding to the, Af the Afghan refugee crisis, and how the stories of refugees and immigrants can lead to more effective public policy. Finally, how engaging with refugees and immigrants can not only increase our empathy and understanding, but can benefit and help our communities to thrive as diverse people living together. Uh, I noted uh, a little while ago in, uh, in the fifth session that uh, we wanna recommend uh, some reading. Uh, and here are those four books. The Displaced Refugee Writers on Refugee Lives. Uh, this is just a really fabulous piece that I use each spring uh, to, to teach in my class. Uh, it's filled with short, uh, pieces written by uh, refugee writers from around the world, some truly exceptional individuals, including Fiat Tan Nguyen, uh, who is a, a Pulitzer Prize winner, uh, who's written about his own experience and uh, those of, of other refugees. Um, and then the We the Interwoven series, as I noted, there are three such books that bring together authors of, uh, of, of many stripes. So, um, and I showed you a little bit about the third one there. So if you have time, uh, especially before we get to our fifth session, it'd be fabulous if you could check out some of these books uh, and to read more again about the lived experiences of individuals from their vantage point, uh, a very important and necessary perspective. Um, so uh, that's basically the, the overview that I wanted to give you. Uh, I just want to reiterate again my extreme excitement about this project. 
Uh, I'm really sort of over, over the moon about the opportunity to have all these incredible conversations uh, with individuals, with leaders, uh, representatives of, of organizations um, in communities uh, across Iowa. Uh, my sense is that we need to be doing uh, far more of this, that as I touched on before, all of our communities are diversifying, globalizing, and very quickly. And we can all do better and uh, do more uh, in, in our own capacities where we live uh, to be, um, you know, as, as some of these pictures uh, show here, you know, a better neighbor. Um, and we truly want to welcome everybody. This project, this grant has a wide reach, and we hope that you will help us reach even further uh, to share these programs, uh, what we'll be doing and our goals with them, the report, for example, with those that you know, in hopes that we can not only reach folks that are really familiar with ICFRC and the programs that we do, uh, but those far beyond. Uh, we're focusing on the state of Iowa, but wherever you live, uh, we hope that joining in for these conversations uh, will uh, give you some perspective of the experiences of these individuals and uh, will empower you, um, will enable you in some ways to know really practical uh, and uh, tangible ways that you can make a difference in your communities for refugees and immigrants. And so I'll leave it there and I'm happy to take uh, any questions uh, that anybody might have. Thank you so much, Dr. Gerlach for that fabulous overview. Um, so we now move to the question and answer part of our program. I'd ask you to please submit your questions via the chat function at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to turn on your video function now so we can see all of your beautiful faces. Um, but please keep yourself muted because we're still recording this. And while we're waiting for questions to come in, I want to point out that while we're extremely grateful to this, for this grant from the Humanities Iowa and National Endowment for Humanities, one of the requirements of this grant is that we match this funding. So we are in an active fundraising campaign right now to raise the money to match this grant, which is one of the requirements. So if you're interested in supporting us, a wonderful group of our donors has provided a matching fund right now. So if you go to icfrc.org backslash donate, which I will put in the chat, you can make a, a donation to support this project, which we would really support because we really rely on our members and community friends to help us carry out these free educational programs, which I think you will find really useful and informative. Um, Peter, before while we're getting questions in the chat room, I wanted to point out this is a different format for us from our normal programs. Do you want to talk a little bit about what this looks like now or since we're doing panels, we're doing longer programs and so forth? Because this is not our normal format. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, so it, it's true that uh, many of, uh, of our speakers uh, are talking uh, solo, perhaps uh, two speakers. In many of these cases, as you saw on the slides, uh, we'll have uh, we'll have four people, uh, five, uh, you know, with with me, and we'll be in conversation. Many of these sessions, or most of them, will be longer in duration. They'll be closer to ninety minutes, which will allow us to hopefully go a little deeper and a little wider, uh, and that's a bit longer too than uh, most of our sessions, which go uh, which go ninety minutes. Uh, excuse me, sixty minutes. Um, in in another way. Uh, and what we're uh, thinking about very intentionally also uh, are the ways in which as an organization we can learn from doing a themed semester like this. Uh, six sessions, maybe seven including today's, uh, that focus on, on a themed topic, which we've, we've never done anything like this before and we're hoping to do a lot more of. Um, so, yeah, I it, it um, a little more investment uh, from folks who, who join uh, uh, our sessions, but it's going to be well worth it. Um, we're we're gonna we're gonna cover a lot, and I think in some ways, really the best way to do this. And and I'm happy uh, the Catherine and the board, you know, have been have been so uh, you know been so on for this, but you know we we really are trying to be. Sort of ambitious here um, and really go far and wide include a lot of people who might otherwise uh, not join in for uh, for for our uh, our sessions or who might not ordinarily be in conversation with one another 
And so you'll see some of those dynamics uh, over the coming months too. Thank you. Um, so one of the other things that I think is exciting about this grant is that we're going to be able to provide honorary to our interns for really the first time, as far as I know. I haven't been with the organization that long, but um, this is an opportunity for our interns to really get involved. And I wanted to point out some of the impetus of this project came from them. I mean, some of our interns have been volunteering with refugee organizations in our community. One of them has been doing a research on, you know, what's been happening in meatpacking plants for immigrants over the past couple of years. Um, another one worked as a Spanish interpreter for migrant workers at healthcare clinics across Iowa. So do you want to say anything about the role of the interns in this? Yeah, um, I, I too am really excited about the opportunity to work uh, with students uh, on this project. Yes, in terms of uh, researching and writing, and that's in some ways really in particular for the report. Um, also, with you know, sort of the program implementation, you know, watching the, the the sessions that we do, thinking intentionally about them, and uh, you know, helping fill in the gaps. Our interns are really amazing young people. Uh, they they come from a rich uh, array of backgrounds and uh, studies here at the university, uh, so they'll be able to. I I hope. Uh, I, I know in some ways to be able to, to give us uh, greater perspectives, make sure that we're really covering as much ground as we can. We are also going to uh, hire a, a videographer who will be helping us uh, deliver stories in a more visual kind of way, both as we talked about uh, with, with her the other day, uh, through images and through video. And in that way, we'll be able to, to get uh, the word out, to get people's stories out, and in more really you know, compelling and hopefully visceral ways. Uh, so yes, the, the interns are, are integral to this, to this project. Great, thank you. Somebody asked a question about the importance of the humanities and how we view this as a humanities project. Yeah, um, right, so our, our Funding comes from a particular source indeed. And I think, you know, for my own purposes, I think very broadly uh, about the humanities. And I'm, uh, I'm hopeful that you will see uh, all those different layers too in these uh, six different sessions. And I've used this uh, expression a few times uh, in, in today's, uh, today's presentation about the lived experiences of individuals. Uh, and how they take us into uh, different different ways of understanding how people live, um, what their viewpoints are, and how they inform our broader understanding of the world in which we live. Uh, and I think this is really crucial. This topic is really crucial. And these insights that we will gain from these individuals, particularly those who identify as refugees and immigrants, uh, because they are voices that are not often uh, not often enough at the table. And so we, we will be, yes, looking very broadly and, and also hopefully um, really digging into our own humanity uh, and, and thinking more deeply about our own understandings of, uh, of our own lives and of the world in which we live. Well, great. Well, I'm getting mostly, um, I get a question now from one saying, do you know how many Afghan refugees will be settled in Lynn and Johnson counties? Do we know that or do we, will we find that out next week? Um, I don't know specifically those two counties. Um, the primary cities there are Iowa City and uh, Cedar Rapids. But what I do know is that Catherine McCauley Center uh, will be placing um, uh, 300 Afghan refugees. Um, individuals and families, uh, more so families, as I understand. So it's a, it's a rather large number for um, our relatively small state. Right, and Catherine will be talking about that next next Thursday on the 16th. Okay. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't and have any more questions. Sorry. No, I was just going to, I was going to echo that point and just say that um, Mach, Suchanska, and Sarah Zejnik will be able to, to talk very uh, broadly about the whole picture and what the process looks like of refugee resettlement, uh, and then what it looks like on the state level. And Sarah will be able to really drill down on what the particular needs are of those individuals and uh, what things will, what, what 
things have looked like in the last uh, month, maybe two months, but really what things will look like uh, and, and how all of us, uh, how communities can step up uh, in the coming months. So we have um, somebody asking us, are these refugees being placed in rural counties or only urban counties? Both. Both. And another person is asking us about, just mentioning something they think that they want us to take into consideration, the impact on agriculture workers, that it's critical for understanding the complex motives for Iowa history of accepting refugees, and so that I'd like us to consider that during our, our conversations too, which I'm, I'm sure we will do. So thank you for that comment. Yeah, thank you. So if there are any other comments, I think, I think this will conclude our program. You and I, I wanted to do a briefer session today than our normal hour long program, just to give people a, an understanding of what's coming, because we're very excited about that. Um, so I wanna give a big thank you to Dr. Peter Gerlach today for sharing his expertise with us. And um, Peter, I'll be pleased to present you with this, our highly coveted ICFRC mug, <laughs> which I will get to you very soon. And um, for all the rest of you, thank you for joining us. Our, as we mentioned, our, our first program in this series is Thursday, December 16th, and you will receive an email tomorrow about how to register for this program so you can participate. But thank you so much, and we are adjourned. Thank you.